mistakes were made or you got this thing for free. Either way, if you try to use this till in 2021 and try to do it with a supported operating system, you're gonna run into trouble. It is not impossible to do, but it is not easy either. What is this thing exactly? Well, we know it's from PAR. Tip this thing over just for context. And I know there was some, there we go, identifying information. This is a PAR M5100. It was manufactured in 2015. Turn this thing on. This thing is the very definition of plant obsolence. I will show you. Yep. I was pressing the wrong button. I don't know if this is going to tell us much of anything. See, we have a whopping 2 gigs of RAM. This has an Intel Atom CPU D2550. To put that in context, uh, the D2550 was released by Intel at the first quarter of 2012. Windows 8 came out, I want to say, August 2012. I don't know if this is going to tell me any pertinent information, but we will see. Well, this, anyway, this is a i80386SX, and we're going to go and tell you how to get a modern operating system on this machine. These all came with Windows 7 32-bit originally, but the manufacturer of Cedarbert or the Intel graphics card for this machine, they didn't release anything after that. So that's very definition of plant obsolescence. A processor and graphics card that was released in the late 2011, 2012, and no plans even make it work with eight. Yeah, I'm not impressed by that. So, anywho, there are three ways to get around this. Each have their own side effects. Some have significant side effects, as you will later learn. The first thing, the first solution involves that thing in front of you, right there. Throw it away. That's the best thing you could do. If you have any kind of money whatsoever, throw this thing away. It's not worth a headache, in my opinion. Or anything with that Intel 3600 video card in it. Don't even bother. If you were to also, I don't condone it, but I don't condemn it either, is if you take this thing out on a shooting range or go Joe Exotic on this thing, that's a pretty good solution too. The second solution may or may not work for everyone. But I will show you shortly. You can install 64-bit version of Windows, although I don't personally recommend it. Let me get a flash drive in here and then we'll be back. Alright, flash drive is in. I'll turn the thing on. I believe we've got to press F7 to get in the boot menu. And away we are.
you are now ready to install Windows. And if you notice already that this screen here, this takes up the vast majority of your screen. If your Windows installer does this, maybe go on the internet and keep trying different ISOs, and you might have one that goes a little bit smaller. What is happening here is that Windows is currently running at 640 by 480, and if your setup does this, chances are the Windows install is likely to do this, and it's really going to be rough working space. So, I'm going to see if I have anything else on my, one of these other flash drives may provide better results. If you are crazy enough to use the go through option three, which I will show you later, then I strongly recommend going for Windows LTSB or Windows LTSC if you have fairly inexpensive access to licensing or if you go without a license, which I can't recommend because that's technically illegal. So I have a 64-bit version ISO that we're going to try now. And we'll wait for that to boot up. Okay, so now that we are booted on a Windows, another ISO, notice how this screen is much smaller. That means we're running on either 800 by 600 or 1024 by 768. If you're actually going to use this as a POS till, that's good enough. So we'll go ahead and we'll start our install. very slowly. If I have to wait for this thing much longer, I might just end this video and go do step one. All right, so I'm gonna go Windows 10 Pro. And one little blurb about if you do go Windows 10 LTSC or B, and you don't have enterprise agreements, well, step one is gonna be, or option one is gonna be your best bet. Throw the thing away, get a new computer. Now we'll go custom. And it's gonna complain that we don't have room, but we're gonna wipe everything away, so that's gonna become a moot point. And once we get to the second part of this, the getting files ready for installation, we will let it do its thing. And once it does, we will continue on with our little video. And we are well on our way here. I'm not sure how long this is going to take. So as soon as we get done detecting devices, we will continue on. All right, we're on basics now. So far, I've wasted a half hour of my life with this. And now we got more just a moments. So this may have been a pretty pointless place to continue this video. All right, yep, keyboard's good. And one thing to note with these PAR 500s, that's not going to work yet. Hmm. 
Oh, dear God. And I'm going through this step because there is something very important that we need to pay attention to on this part of the setup. But until it gets to that point, we're going to pause the video here. Okay, this part's pretty straightforward. I'm going to set this up for an organization. We're going to go for another just a moment move here. Try to get out of the light the best I can. And domain join instead. Who's going to use this PC? That's a great question. Let's make it admin for now. Passwords, anybody can set those up. All right, so you'll want to hit no to this. Decline this. That's this very important because that will not work if you go with step three or solution three. I keep calling them steps. So turn all this stuff off. It's only going to cause problems. So everything either down to basic or no, and then accept. Now Microsoft, oh, maybe, hold on. Well, until we get to the desktop, I'm gonna pause the video. Okay. We have a desktop. So I'm gonna try and open up Device Manager and see what we have going on here, if anything. I'll adjust the time zone. Alright, so we're in the right time zone now. So, yeah, basically what we'll do, with Windows will install the basic display adapter. At this point, I would try your application and see if it, how it works with that. And if you're in 640 by 480, more likely than not, you're going to be doing solution three. But fortunately, I have a version of Windows that does either 1024 by 768 or the 800 by 600. But there is one more thing that we can do. And not everybody has this, uh, if you don't have a touch screen, this doesn't apply to you. Let's see if we can open up this, uh, trying to open up that folder. I haven't even done anything yet.
All right, so I finally got Windows Explorer to open. If you have a PAR 500 till or the pet PAR, I think it's the M5100, you will need a special driver. You will need the version 3.3.2.10 driver. If you have the driver ends in point one, this is not going to work on Windows 8.1 or 10. It took me a while to find that. So we'll get that installed. This is pretty straightforward. That's fine. No harm installing them both. If somebody has a Linux version of that driver, please drop it in the comment section. I'd love to try and put Linux on one of these, but this touchscreen driver really puts things at a disadvantage. And touchscreen is working. And I'm not sure if this is a bootable flash drive or not, so I'm going to try and force the boot order on this when it comes time. Actually, you know what? We can just pause the video and I will once we're back online, we'll continue on from there. Okay, so we are booted again. And at this point, if the program you are using or programs you are using will work fine with the basic display driver, stop right here. If you're stuck in 640 by 480, or you really want to roll the dice, then we will go through step three or solution number three. And I warn you now, early on, there are a lot of side effects with this. The modern applications, your Windows Store, will go bye-bye once you do this. Your start menu will go bye-bye once you do this. Although there is a workaround for that. So, once you start going toward solution three, there is no going back. First thing you want to do is unpin edge, whatever I just unpinned. I don't know if I can unpin that. I don't know if I can get rid of Cortana. Yep, okay, I can partially get rid of Cortana. The search box will not work either. So might as well get rid of it. It's gonna be a huge inconvenience, but if you want any chance of this working, you'll need to do it. .NET Framework 2.0 through 3.5 is the next piece you'll need. So we will install that. Oh, I think we can go through it this way. Okay, we're off to a great start. <laughs> well, we do have some resemblance of a search, so that's interesting but maybe that's because we haven't done solution three yet so we'll go control panel programs and features we will turn windows features on or off there's a command line way to install this through the uh, 
your installation media if you really wanted to. I'm just going to get it from the web. Another side effect is some of these icons, if you have a, if you're dare try this on a netbook, your sound icons may not work either. I mean, they'll be there, but I don't think you'll be able to do anything. So that'll be a huge side effect with this. I don't think Edge will work either, so if you need web browsing, go get Chrome or Firefox or some other browser. New Edge might be fine, I don't know, I haven't tested that. Again, in my case we have a PAR 500 till, so I ain't gonna be using it for much, and who knows if I get angry enough with it, I might just go with Solution 1 and throw this thing out. But I'm not sure how fast this is gonna be, so I am going to pause the video here again. All right, we have done that, and this should be the part of the video, or concludes the part of the video that requires internet. Next thing you need to do is run Classic Shell. Go ahead and run. This came out originally around the time of Windows 8, I believe, when Microsoft tried to force their modern look on everybody and it went about as well as you expect. So everything as is, keep the defaults. Let's hit yes. And you can skip the readme. Now, Oh, hold on, we need to replace, we need to go through this, and I think we gotta do, I'm gonna do Windows 7 style, that'll probably be best. And let's see what we got. So now we have classic start menu installed. Previously, if you had to get to PC settings, that will still work, so it's right below control panel and you can get through all this stuff. Now, the next part, once you go here, there is no turning back. So now you want to hit the arrow next to shut down, and when you do this part, you want to be holding the shift key. I did try to do that one-handed, so we'll see how that goes. What that shift and restart will do, that will get you into a troubleshooting mode. That allow you to go into safe mode. Yep, so now you want to hit troubleshoot. Advanced options and you want the command prompt. This part can be done with a Linux Live CD as well, or Live Media, but I don't think that's necessary here. At this point, the computer will restart. Okay, I don't know what that's about. Hopefully that doesn't uh, put an end to this video. But I have a feeling it might. We'll give it a minute or two. I believe what's supposed to happen here is you're supposed to get a command prompt.
Yeah. All right, we might take this one offline and wait for it to load that way. I believe I had the problem resolved. There was a flash drive in the system was trying to boot off of that. So we'll see what happens next. So far, it looks like it's going to do exactly what it's supposed to do. And you'll want to select a user. If you set up a password for that local user, you'll need it at this point. So now we have a command prompt. So now there are two, two directories that will need to be either deleted or renamed. I prefer the renaming procedure just because that's a little bit safer than deleting. If you find that it's better to use the basic display driver, it is easy to get them back if you just rename. So we need to go, first of all, the first directory will be the Windows directory. Perhaps we should go into the C drive and do this this way. Or maybe it's D. It may take some trial and error to find your Windows directory. All right, there we go. And I probably shouldn't be doing this one-handed, but I am. The first directory we want to rename is in the Windows directory, and it's a folder called System Apps. next directory you want to go to is under the program files directory if you try to do this in Windows itself while you're booted it's just not going to work you'll have to deal with permissions and all that and I prefer not to do that so we'll rename The other directory is going to be called Windows Apps. And I'll do the same here. We'll call it interesting. That's very interesting because that should have worked. I wonder if 1909 or higher got rid of this uh, directory. Yeah, that directory is not in there. So, looking x86. Do not have that directory. Very interesting. Okay, so apparently I don't have that directory and Microsoft may have done away with that. But anywho, we will continue on and we'll boot. Once we do that, I know what, we'll hang on for this one if it isn't too long. But if you have Windows 10, as far as that other folder that we tried to find, if you have Windows 10 1809 or earlier, that second folder will exist. May even 1903 may even have it. I'm not entirely sure where that folder disappears. 
but well, we'll see. And if you use an Intel Atom, get used to waiting, but you already knew that. And some of these side effects may come up very early, especially if you forget to delete those icons. But now, we're going to do the moment of truth here. And actually, yes, there is a side effect already, this Microsoft Edge icon no longer shows up properly. Nor will it load. But if you have Windows 10 LTSB or LTSC, you don't have Edge anyways, but you can install it later on. I believe the new Edge will work. Let's see if setup will run. And I just realized that this is a 32-bit version driver, so we may be... But we can install it without using the installer, I believe. At least we're gonna give it the old college try anyway. Yeah, I think because I put in a 64-bit operating system on here, we're not going to be able to run the installer, but oh well. So let me do that. I will have to start this over. I will get a 64-bit ver or 32-bit version of Windows on here, and we can run through it once we have that. And I'm going to grab an SSD while I do that. All right, so now we have a 32-bit version of Windows at our disposal. So let's try running setup now. As you can tell, we're in 640 by 480, and oh, the setup simply says no way. So we'll go through the device manager and try it there. And just look at this, horrible.
system properties. So you want to go find the display adapters. I tell you, Windows 10 is just totally unbearable in 640 by 480. Uh, no. Okay. And ignore the warnings if you get such a thing. If you go straight to installing the driver, you will get blue screens on startup and you will never, your Windows install will basically be useless at that point. On some computers, even going through these steps still may make, make your computer useless. And we'll see what happens with this one. Now that our screen got significantly smaller. So now we are in Intel Corporation 2012. We're working properly. We have done the impossible. Let's see if it stays that way. On the second install, I did locate an SSD, so we have that going for us. I still don't know if we're out of the woods yet. So now let's try the Intel utilities provided that we have them. Well, we got graphics properties, so let's see what this does. So far, nothing. Oh, there we go. And you can control things from the Intel graphics media control panel now. On say, if you have a netbook, that screen resolution would be typically 1024 by 600. One other side effect I need to tell you about right now, I don't know if it's going to show up here yet, but if you get a feature update in Windows, you're gonna likely have to rename that directory again. Because it will when each feature update will bring back that directory under Windows. So that's another side effect that you must know about. And you can hover on stuff, but it's not 
it may or may not work. Like for example, if we try, oh, this one's gonna make a liar out of me. And just crash the whole system. So maybe there's another directory somewhere too. So yeah, it, everybody's uh, everybody's experience may vary. Again, use the long-term servicing branches of Windows if you can. Just because this driver install works for one person, it may not for others. And I don't know what if there's anything we're missing in the 1903 and beyond versions of Windows. So to summarize our three solutions, solution one is to simply throw this thing in the trash. Solution two is to use the basic display driver. If it works for you, great. There are many versions of Windows 10 on the internet that will work just fine in 10 by seven. You just gotta find them. Or solution three is to go through the headache that I just went through and it may or may not even work for you. And I am tired of looking at this thing and I'm about to do solution number one. So at this point, if you have any questions, comments or concerns or even constructive criticism or a real solution on how to keep this horrible experiment alive, please put it in the comments section. Or if you have a Linux driver for that touch display, please tell us about it. Thank you for watching.